feisty. Andrew McIntyre driving a, a 1970 Datsun 510 station wagon as you can see got it eight nine ten years ago who knows how long it's been um, been modifying it ever since always something you want to do is turbo the car so you know reading 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 I eventually bought this engine with the five speed from a friend block and head got decked it got bored over half a mil you know, forged internals dynoed at unknown auto at 335 horsepower to the wheels and then 345 torque he says 13 and a half PSI, but when I'm on it, the gauge goes to 20. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here. Gosh, I love 510s. Yeah, I am so ready for an optimal amount of sketchiness going on with this car. <laughs> old cars, like, Andrew's like immediately, hey, this is a 50 year old car. I'm like, I had to think for a second. Yeah. What, 50 years old? We're so used to playing with 90s Japanese cars. <laughs> They're already like 30 years old. That's insane to think this is over 50 years old. It's like crazy. that blows my mind. Six puck unsprung with a light and flywheel. It's not too bad though. All right, you guys. This is Andrew's Datsun 510 with a turbocharged KA under the hood. KA24. Elvis is back. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> we saw this car, like I said, at uh, Weekfest down in Seattle. I wasn't going to do this video without you. So. Oh, thank you. Here we go. <laughs> yes, because I'm a huge Datsun guy too. And I've always wanted a 510. And I still want a 510. So if anyone is watching this video and has one to uh, donate to me, donate. reach out to me. Yeah, if they see your other build, I don't know, they might. I know, they'll be like, you're going to destroy this thing. <laughs> oh, some rubbing. A little bit of rubbing. Yeah. Let's just get into it. So. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, you guys, I'm pausing here to thank High Boy for sponsoring this video. In front of me is their brand new P6 e-bike, which, as you can see, has incredibly fat 26-inch tires just in time for winter here in the Pacific Northwest. So the P6 basically takes the idea of a traditional mountain bike and cranks it to 11. Its 48-volt battery gives it a max range of 97 kilometers or 60 miles while using the pedal assist and a top speed of 28 miles per hour or 45 kph. Yes, I would highly recommend you wear a helmet on this thing. It is fast. Not only that, but it gets up to speed real quick. Level one is, I mean, torquey enough for me. And yeah, it's easy to get lazy and just let the 750 watt motor do all of the work. But the best part about this bike is it's more than happy to be used like that, maybe on a commute, but also will happily hit the trail, the beach, rain, mud, whatever situation you put yourself in. I found 100 millimeters of travel on the hydraulic front suspension to be plenty, especially after adjusting the preload to fit my riding style. The Shimano seven speed gear set made it easy to climb hills. And if you want to ride it at night, it's got this LED headlight. So visibility isn't a problem. So if you want to check out the P6 e-bike, Highboy is running their Black Friday sale until December 2nd. You guys can get 25% off. And with our code RUP6, you can get an additional $65 off on the Canadian site. For you guys in the US, the Amazon link is in the description. Now back to the video. Tiny turbocharger, I believe Andrew said 48 millimeter turbo on here. How many pounds of boost is it pushing? Let's, you wanna find out? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go. Let's see. Oh my, she's feisty. That was 18. 18 pounds of boost. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. This is great too because KAs are, they're like the opposite of the SR20. SR20 is all top end KATs. So I don't know any, almost anything about the differences between the KA and, yeah. So I'm not, this is not my field right now, like it's, the motor. It's not my field either, okay. but it's KA is basically the USDM S chassis engine. Okay. And the SR20 was all the JDM cars. Oh, I see. So twin cam, these came single cam or twin cam. But this should have a little bit more low, low down torque. Mm -hmm. But shall we? It sounds shall we get into it. it sounds really good. I was full throttle, and that and was you were full not throttle. Even. No. <laughs> full wheel spin in 
second Gosh. gear. Those sounds from the... <laughs> Do you feel it kind of like... Yeah, literally wanting to lift yeah. off. <laughs> Tons of pitch. You guys also, excuse my seating position here. Andrew's a big guy, he's tall. I can't move my seat any any closer. You need a booster seat. I do. <laughs> I wish I could sit closer, but. And I feel like we're literally in a tin can. It is, you can hear the tinniness of the metal. Like I think, um, what's it called? All the Japanese cars, you can't, probably can't even hear me. But older Japanese cars of this era had very thin sheet metal. My Datsun is the same way, but this even feels thinner than the Datsun. You can <laughs> so, tell the extra millimeter really yeah, helps. Yeah, but he's car. put some, um, what's it called, sound dampening in it to make it less tinny, but it still sounds tinny. <laughs> yeah, he's done a lot of work, cu custom carpet and everything like that. It does, you can, feel, you can hear the rock chip. Yeah, the, literally the everything. Rocks. Take a look, it's only got 205 wide tires in the rear. Even the Civic drivers are laughing right now. But hey, it hooks way better than I thought it would. Boost rolls in strong around 2800 RPM, and the dump is open by 35, but then red line comes quicker than boost did, so you're back on the clutch pedal. And like clockwork, there's another punch of torque in your spine when you hit the next gear. It's responsive, it feels snappy, and you're lucky if you can catch a break from shifting on a tight back road the sign of a great streetcar. The interior's got some more modern Acura Integra seats, original vinyl in the back, a Momo steering wheel, and some gauges for peace of mind. It's shouting function to me, which is ironic because I first saw this car on a show floor, but it wasn't always this way, which Andrew will tell us about later in the video. Went to go see the car, um, had a single cam in it, Trying to be a cheap prick, I was like, oh, I don't know, man, I'll give you a 3,500. And he goes, no, not happening. So I'm like, okay, and I drive home, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, what am I doing? Like, I want this car, I, I don't know what I'm trying to do here. So I message him, and I'm like, oh, you're trying to see you right now, like, I'll, I'll buy the car. So I picked it up for 3,800, I think, in 2015, 2016, got insurance on it, and then I drove it to, drove it to college for a few years. It's been repainted a little bit, put, uh, just blocked it down, I sanded it down and repainted it for, Stance Wars, five years ago. Um, you need another new paint job, a bunch of rust I didn't deal with properly. As a young kid, you just want to get shit done, so you do it yep. however you can at the time. These, oh, I don't even know how I'm pronouncing it properly, August August Japan Feroach, Feroach, I don't know how to say it. 14s by six and a half in the front, and then uh, 14 by seven in the back. That was a, an automatic single cam that was in it. As I learned more and more about cars, it was just had terrible detona detonation problems. I had no clue. Always something you want to do is turbo the car. So, you know, reading, reading, reading. I eventually bought this engine with the five speed from a friend. Block and head got decked. It got bored over half a mil, you know, forged internals. So I got to build the separate engine with the five speed on it outside of the car while still driving this one. And that's kind of what I like to do right now is every time I want to do something to the car, I just go buy it first and then I do it. Like I got three valve covers, I got three intakes because I like to do silly things to them. Shave it off, 10 at dash 10 and line on there. So got that welded on there. I shaved the crap out of all this. So everything that I like to do, just I like to do it. I don't want to take the car to commission. I want to yes. drive the car. So um, my friend Mandeep came over. We jacked the car up, just dropped it out the bottom, throw it out, put the other one on the, wheel, on the, on the stand and put it in. It was in in half an hour. Yeah, it's a Precision 4831, so the smallest turbo that Precision makes. Just an eBay log manifold, and then the exhaust all the way back is just three inch, completely custom from a guy, a local guy. The first time I drove, I was just around the block. The guy that put the, the beginning tune on there was like, okay, cool, like we got it started up, I'm gonna go home. I'm like, no, please, 
let me go around the block. He's like, oh, fuel enrichment shit. It's not ready. We're going around the block. And I just had the stupidest smile on my face. As soon as you can hear that, that blow off valve go, I was on a crunch because my kid was, uh, my kid was about to be born in, in March. And I was like, I gotta get this thing done. Cause if it's not done when that kid gets here, like it's just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So I don't want to be another statistic where, you know, oh, you know, you know it's, it's on Facebook because you know, life got in the way, yeah. go, to, go to sell the project car. That's when the vultures come in. Not happening, Scoop it up. not happening. Yeah. <laughs> so bigger injectors and then full standalone. That was a big decision. I want to be able to, something's wrong with it, tune it, look at it, log it, things like that. So, and then, you know, oh, we'll just hack into the freaking harness. And then everything, everything was just like, let's do it the cheap way. And I was like, oh, might as well do it properly. So I've got the Flink ECU in there now and I love it. I like, I like being able to jump on the computer and check things out. You can't just have your foot to the floor all the time. No. <laughs> you, you really have to pick and choose your moments. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull a U-turn here. And it's cool because Andrew brings it out to shows, but after driving, even in a not optimal seating position, the shifter's in a perfect spot. Yeah. The pedals are relatively easy to kind of heel toe, and the, the inputs are all still kind of very precise. Yeah, and everything feels tight. I'm guessing because of that Technotoy tuning suspension the upgrade that he has mm -hmm. in it, but everything feels, it doesn't feel loose and no. like, no, it feels nice. So Andrew's also rebuilt the steering box. So this is old school steering. I've also only driven a couple cars like this, but really, it's really awesome without power steering too, getting into the corner, but on center here, and you'll feel it in a second. Oh. There's just like, there's like three inches of nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> three inches. But it kind of makes it nice for cruising. Yeah. You can just kind of two finger it. That is finger true, yeah. yeah. And all the vibrations I feel through yeah. the pedal. The brake pedal's a little different. The brake pedal's like, if I really stand on it, I don't know what it's gonna do. Yeah, is it manual brakes? I'm curious. It feels to know. like it. Yeah. It feels like it. Dang, no assist. So loud. So loud. Shift and then it's just back in boost. <laughs> It's super drivable though. Okay, I would, that's good. Other than the clutch, like you could daily this car. Now Andrew doesn't because he he wants to keep it clean, and yeah. I don't I don't blame him. So you think it's best to turn around then? Oil. Mm. I wanted a better rear end than we had. We had the H190 from uh, 82 200 SX. Uh, comes with like three eight nines. So decent gearing. Uh, disc brakes was was a plus. Not great for the motor that we're running, I'm eventually gonna break it, the stupid shit that we're doing. So I wanted uh, I wanted a better rear end that had red, more readily available parts. So first thing you think of is Ford 8.8. Uh, we got the Ford 8.8 in there with air ride, so it's just like air shocks. Mm -hmm. So it rides on the exhaust just the way it is. So I had to put the, the old Monroe air shocks in there. So I aired those up to drive. And then I put a, an inch drop block in there to get the kind of the lowness that I wanted. I still want a little bit lower, but can't really do that until we fix the suspension. So actually, let's just air it up then. Why not? Let's and then go. you can see the monster truck that we are. <laughs> and this is how you do it. You know, yeah. you, go, you go to the car show and then you get to do this and it's hilarious. You know, I'm at, I'm at Week Fest with all these next to like a freaking Porsche and all these beautiful cars. And I'm back here fiddling with this thing so I can drive out of the arena. There we go, boys. <laughs> A Siri hair ride. <laughs> yeah, the wagons have the solid oh. rear axle, so we don't get to have any fun. All the other guys get to have all the fun and all the yeah. cool parts and swapping, swapping rear ends where we don't get to do that. We have to figure out different solutions. When I was younger, when we repainted it, I was hanging out with um, a couple guys that are in, big into Datsuns and I was influenced by them. So I was like, oh, I want the stance, you know, I want the stretch tires, I want it low and uh, it kind of had chop springs on when I had it and the ass end was banging, the, the axles hitting the tunnel, everything like that. So I liked that, I liked it low. Um, and then as the years went on, I found different wheels that I liked. I, you know, like I went and I bought a pair of old, old snowflakes and I spent like $1,200 redoing them. And then like two and a half years later, I discovered Japanese wheels. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell am I doing spending that much money on these things when these exist? Yeah. So it definitely changes. I had the stretch tires that were super wide for the car, loved it for a bit. And then I just kind of wanted it more 
practical. I didn't want it super low where you can't drive it over stuff. Um, now, since I've swapped it out to the five bowl and these wheels, kind of just like, like I call it like Japanese muscle. Yeah. I got big wide fatties on the back. Yes. Yeah, the old long champs on here looked really good. They had like, the, the long champs are Japanese muscle to me. Those are those are the first like real Japanese wheels I bought were the long champs. And then I traded those for Mark threes, mm -hmm. some SSR Mark threes. And those are in the garage. Those are gonna get hung up on the wall. Those are, cool. those are my favorite wheels. Those are phenomenal. Just get in it, drive it. No one's gonna, no one gives a shit what's engine in it as long as it's driving. Have fun. Don't look back. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Woo, that clutch is heavy. Cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It almost needs a shift light. Yeah. Because you're shifting a lot. Woo. And the red line's not so high. Yeah. So. Oh, oh yeah, the steering. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are right about the play. Oh. Yeah, There's like, like three feet of spot play. <laughs> <laughs> you were like you were being nice about how much play there was. <laughs> okay. Alright. Gosh. <laughs> this is, oh my this gosh, this is amazing. Ridiculous. Not too much lean in the in the corners, either. yeah. There's not no. a ton of roll. It's, ba it's balanced, seriously. Oh, I like this thing. I like this thing a lot. And below the boost, it's so drivable. Yeah. Like it's like smooth. I mean, apart from the noise and the tinniness that you hear, yeah. like ringing. The, oh. the fender mirrors too. Yes. That Andrew did. That's a JDM thing uh, versus North American spec. The cool factor. This is what I was thinking this morning. This is the definition of cool. So cool. Like, I, I, have you met someone who doesn't like a no? Datsun like 510? everybody's just smiling. Like outside, it's just a pleasure to behold. Yeah. <laughs> is it getting louder, or is that just me? No, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool swap. It's a. This is such a cool swap. It's a really and it's, cool swap. It's not quite overpowering the car. Like no. it's just on the verge. Yeah. Another hundred horsepower. Too much. Too much. I think this. Too much. Three hundred is perfect for this chassis. I think. Yeah. Um. And with the upgrades that he has, again, that just. <laughs> Once he gets, if he does, get rid of the leaf springs and goes independent rear suspension, yes. I think that is going to complete, completely like iron out any bounces and or anything like that. And fixes this five million degrees of <laughs> You're going to be, this is going to be like your your comparison going forward for yeah, all. Yeah, for all, play. Yeah. Cool. Like I was like, oh, I'm trying to turn. Yeah. Like, oh, there's nothing. <laughs> it's a shame because when, you're, like, right now, it feels good. Yeah, it feels good. Like once it's weighted. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't. This is so different from an SR. An SR, like, it doesn't quite scream at the top end, oh, but it kind I of see. the pitch kind of changes the sound. Mm -hmm. This is, just feels like it just growls. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a mashup. <laughs> It's literally like a mad dog. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dead and then it's just alive. There's yeah. no, it's on or off. There's no like. Wow. Oh, well set up though. Like, well set up. I feel like he kind of downplayed this car. The yeah, he did. A little bit. Yeah, he did. And he it did. wasn't as hard to drive as I thought it was going to be, apart from no. in the corners. That's All right. It. Ooh, this was Sweet. fun. We did it, Elvis. <laughs> we survived. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, Elvis also shot a video today. If you want to check that out, the link is in the description. And uh, we'll be back soon. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. See you guys later. Peace.